Over the last 10 years, our web pages have become more dynamic and powerful thanks to JavaScript. We've moved a lot of code that was normally on the server side into our browsers, leaving us with thousands of lines of JavaScript code connecting to various HTML and CSS files with no formal organization. This is why more and more developers are using JavaScript frameworks like Angular, React, or Vue. Vue is an approachable, versatile, and performant JavaScript framework that helps you create a more maintainable and testable code base. Vue is a progressive JavaScript framework, which means if you have an existing server-side application, you can plug Vue into just one part of your application that needs a richer, more interactive experience. Or if you want to build more business logic into your front end from the get-go, Vue has the core libraries and the ecosystem you'll need to scale. Like other front-end frameworks, Vue allows you to take a web page and split it up into reusable components, each having its own HTML, CSS, and JavaScript needed to render that piece of the page. Next, we'll take a look at Vue in action by building a product inventory page, but stay tuned to the end of the video for a message from Vue's creator, Evan Yu. We won't be teaching you how to use Vue, but we'll introduce a couple key concepts that make Vue so useful. As with many JavaScript applications, we start from the need to display data onto our web page. With Vue, it starts out really simple. We include the Vue library, create a Vue instance, and plug into our root element with the ID of app. EL stands for element. We'll also move our data inside an object and change X into an expression with the double curly braces. As you can see, it works. Pretty cool, but the magic of Vue starts when data changes. If we jump into the console and change the value of our product, notice that as soon as the value of product changed, Vue automatically updated our HTML. This is because Vue is reactive, meaning that when our data changes, Vue takes care of updating all the places we're using it in our web page. This works with any kind of data, not just strings. So instead of a single product, let's use an array of products. Then we'll update our h2 to an unordered list and create a new list item for each product in the array using Vue's v4 directive. This way each product gets its own list item, as you see here. This is still a little contrived though, so let's start with our list empty and fetch our products from an actual API, which could be coming from a database somewhere. When our app is created, we'll fetch the latest products from this API. All you need to take from it is that we're fetching our list of products and updating them in our data. As you can see on our web page, each list item is showing the object it returned. And well, it's not human readable yet, so let's change the way it's displayed. We'll print out quantity and name. And there it is, printing out nicely. We might want to call attention to the items that have quantity zero, so let's add a little span with the text out of stock. This should only appear if our item quantity equals zero. We're going to use the v if directive. Because our jacket has a quantity of zero, it's out of stock. What if we wanted to print out the total number of products under our list? To make this work, we need to create a computed property called total products, which returns the total quantity of our products. If you're not familiar with JavaScript reduce, it's adding up all the quantities from each product. As you can see over in our browser, it's properly adding up all the quantities. Here in the browser, I want to show you Vue's Chrome plugin, where we can see our array of data and inspect it right here. Since we're in the console, just for fun, let's pop the last item out of the array and see what happens. As you can see, not only is our list updated, but our total as well, as you would hope. Next, let's add some interactivity to this page through the use of a button. We'll create an add button for each product, and when a click occurs, we'll increment the quantity by one. Back in the browser, notice how when we add an item, not only does the total inventory get updated, but also if we increment our jacket product, our out of stock notice goes away. Clicking this button a million times is going to get tiring, so what if we wanted to write in the quantity of jackets or hiking socks? We just create a new input field and bind it to our product quantity field with the vModel directive, specifying that it is always a number. You'll notice now I can input the total quantity of each item and it gets updated immediately. I can even set the quantity back to zero and I get my out of stock statement. And my add buttons still work just fine. 
If we were building a larger application, we might want to split things up at this point into their own components and files. Vue even has a command line interface, which makes it simple to start real projects quickly. We might even use single file view components, which contain their own HTML, JavaScript, and Scope CSS, or SCSS. Hi, I'm Evan Yu, the creator of Vue.js. What you've seen here barely scratched the surface of what Vue can do. There's so much more in the ecosystem to help you build, organize, and scale your front-end applications. To get a better taste, read our documentation today. I think you'll enjoy the Vue. Thanks for watching. If you're about to go code some Vue or start learning, click that link right up there so you can download Vue Mastery's Essential Vue Cheat Sheet. It has all the syntax you're going to need to know right at your fingertips, and it's free. Also, you might want to click the subscribe button. We'll be producing a bunch of educational Vue content over the next few months. And lastly, just head over to the Vue documentation if you haven't yet. The guide over there is spectacular.